all right till now we have seen selenium okay selenium will just give you commands which will help you interact with the browser okay selenium will not help you generate reports or selenium will not help you in writing test at all okay right so whatever we have done today or till date we have just written plain selenium code which will interact with the browser now how do you build the test cases and all for that we have got test ng so i'll create a new java project all right and i will name it as test ng day 14 okay now our uh, test ng will help you build the test cases the first thing is that you have to install test ng on your machine okay for installing test ng just uh, go to google and type test ng eclipse okay test ng gets added as a add on inside eclipse okay you go to the first link This is the complete documentation of test ng you can click on this link install the plugin click on it and go to the next page and this is the link to download the release for test ng okay copy this i will give it to you on the webex chat as well right and <coughs> i'm sorry go to eclipse and after going to eclipse go to help install new software and paste the link and instead of pending it will show you test ng in 2 3 minutes it takes a little while to load click on the check box click on next 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 eclipse will restart okay in the end and after eclipse restarts you can go to window show view other and under java you will be able to see test ng so that means test ng is successfully installed as a plugin so you can verify the installation as well but eclipse has to restart okay eclipse will restart fine now test ng will help you build the test cases it's a unit testing framework it is not meant for selenium it's a generic framework given for unit testing people use it you can use it with selenium because it's got very good features all right so let us see the features right in test ng and this is a source folder under the source folder i'll create a new package known as test cases package is like uh, a folder under a folder okay right if you go to the project properties and if you open the project folder then under day 14 test ng project under the source folder you will be able to see the test case so package is a folder under a folder okay and out here i will create a new class right for example uh, a test case like search and by test okay right so out here this this class will have test cases test ng test cases in test ng uh, we have got annotation we have annotations like at the rate test at the rate test is known as a annotation okay and what it symbolizes i'll just tell you i'll just make a function public void search so this means that search function will become a test 
Okay, you can move the mouse over the error. You will see the option to add testng as a library in the project. You add it. When you add it, you will be able to see testng as a library out here. Okay, with jars and all. Right. And then you move the mouse over there and you can import the test annotation. Okay, so we have imported the test annotation. Right. And now inside this test case, you can write system.out.println. Hold on, it is hanged. Yeah. So it's test. There is no main function in testng. Like we are used to have main functions in the other Java files and all, right? So in testng, there is no main function. You just simply write this command and when you run this code, says that it prints search test total test runs failures are zero skips are zero you can also run it like right click on the java file and you will get the option run as test test okay there is no main function it rather tells you in the end that the total number of test cases which have executed are one failures are zero and skips are zero Okay. Right now, similarly, you can build more test cases. Okay, I can write at the rate test public void a add to cart. Okay, inside it, I can print. adding to cart right then add the rate test public void checkout i can print checking out so when you run this code it runs and it prints Everything total test runs are 3, failures are 0, skips are 0. So that's how it runs. And if you look at the output, it prints over here adding to cart, checking out, and search. Now, this is a little weird. Adding to cart is printed first, then checking out, then search test. I was assuming that first search test will be executed, then checking out, then adding to cart. Okay. Uh, I was assuming that it will run from top to bottom, but it is not the case. Look, testng has got its own mechanism through which it executes the test cases, the order. Okay, you cannot decide the order. Okay, if you want to decide the order yourself, you have to prioritize the test cases. Okay, you have to write over here that for this test case, the priority is 1. Okay. Then for this test case, the priority is 2. Okay. Then for the next test case, the priority is 3. So with the priority, you can prioritize the test cases. That is this test will run first. Then after that, this test will run. Then after that, this test will run. So when you run this code now, you will see that it runs all three of them, but it runs in the order in which you want it. Okay. You can prioritize the test cases this way. All right. Fine. Now, out here, just one minute. Just. Okay. 
so now what you can do is you can do the validations as well out here it says that total test runs are free and failures are zero and skips are zero okay now how do you fail a test case how do you validate stuff okay let me make a new file known as validations right now out here on in testing what happens you have some expected value fine the expected value we generally read from the excel files or properties files we keep them over there right and you have some actual value actual value we, you will get with the help of selenium okay right so you have to compare both of them and pass or fail the test case so to compare actual and expected values which you get most of the times this is the case you have an expected value or an actual value and you have to do the comparison based on that so you use the assert class assert class in is there in test engine okay right if you write assert dot you will get assert equals function okay assert equals function make sure that you are getting it from org dot test engine okay sometimes uh, people import it from or get it from uh, org dot j unit okay don't take it from j unit you are doing test engine take it from the test engine package okay this will help you perform the validation always assert equals you can assert equals in a way that you can compare the ex the actual value with an expected value this in in assert class every function is static you can directly call it with the name of the class the way i am doing right now I am calling the assert equals function directly, right? I did not create the object of the assert class, so it is static in nature. Everything in assert class is static in nature, so you can send the actual value here, expected here. Both of them are equal, so this will pass. So when you run this code. Hold on. Right click on. Okay, okay. This should not be main function. I'm sorry. At the rate test. Public. Void. Any temp. I'll just give it any name. I'm sorry. It should not have been the main function. You can import the test annotation. And when you run this, you will see that failures are zero. But if I change this if i put z over here in the expected value and i change the actual and the expected and if i run this so it will show you that it is a failure apart from this you know if you look at this tab results of running the class you get the proper systematic results as well okay it says it shows that there is some assertion error expected x y z but found x right so this is a if summary of report okay and if you refresh your day 14 folder 
you will see a test output folder. This contains the actual HTML reports in index.html. It will contain the actual HTML reports. You can copy this URL. Open it in a browser. Right, so these are the default SNG HTML reports. These are not very impressive. We won't be doing these reports. We will be doing better reports known as extent reports. But still, these are default reports which are generated by TestNG. Okay. And every time you run the program, you will set you this test output folder will have the reports. The older reports will obviously be lost. Okay. Right. So this is how TestNG works. Fine. Now there are other assertion functions as well. For example, you can write assert dot assert fail or assert true right hold on so you can give a condition over here in this what is assert true I'll tell you in this you can give a condition you can give a condition like 5 greater than 4 or 5 greater than 3 and some error message now this assertion wants that this condition should evaluate to true if the condition which you give over here evaluates to true then this assertion will pass ok if I run this it is passing there are no failures if the condition over here evaluates to false then it will fail and in the it is failing and in the failure it will show some error message this is actually the failure message so over here you can give conditions for example 10 greater than 12 10 greater than 12 is false assertion will fail and on failure it will throw the error message some error message out here okay I hope you are getting my point now when is this kind of assertion used remember we had made a function like is element present we had made this function and we used to send the x path of the element and this function used to tell us that whether the element is present on the web page or not so if is element present function returns you false that it is not present you can throw the error message over here that uh, say element not found okay right so you can use it over there Alright, so these are main functions in assertion which you will be using a lot. So assert true function wants that the condition which you are writing over here should be evaluating to true. Okay, right. Now I will make one more class or let me go back to the original one which I had. Okay, in this, we had these three test cases and you can pass or fail any test case. For example, in search test, I can write assert dot assert true and I can directly write false and I'll fail the test case. Now sometimes you deliberately want to fail the test case like I want to show something to you and I want to deliberately fail the test case. Sometimes you are in a situation for example you are on a web page and there is a uh, some 
button which should not be present on the web page or you should be logged in inside the application and you come to know that you are not logged in inside the application so there are situations in your uh, execution where you are very sure that the test has failed okay and you directly want to report a failure so in that case you can write over here assert dot fail assert dot fail will fail the test case directly if you want to give some failure message which should come in reports you can give that failure message over here all right okay so you can give your own failure message and if i run this code you will see that it will run and it will fail the test case and in the results you will see the failure message also coming up okay your message fine okay now out here hold on if i write system dot out dot print then on this line and on the next line if i write system dot out dot print then b if i run the code you will see that only a is printed b is not printed okay what happens is if there is a assertion failure the program stops on that line the program simply stops the test case stops on the line when you have a failure now sometimes the failure is not very critical for example you are comparing the title of the web page and the title of the web page is not a very critical thing fine the failure if the titles don't match fine you can at least report the error and you can move forward okay the at times the failures are not so critical and you don't want to stop the flow so over there we use soft assertions okay because this kind of assertion will stop the flow right let me create a new class known as soft assertions example and i'll create a test at the test public void test for assert right and you import the test annotation okay fine now <laughs> you don't want to stop the flow okay now out here there is a class known as soft assert okay you can create the object of that class and you can write soft assert dot assert equals you can give x actual and expected value so both of them are different so the test should fail if i run this the test never fails it's writing failure zero okay it is not failing all right now what is the reason the reason is in soft assertion you can give as many conditions 
you want to put up okay you can write soft assert dot assert true right so i have got three conditions over here three validations if i run this two of them are failing this is failing this is failing or you can directly fail the test case as well you can write soft assert dot fail uh, with the message as uh, some error okay right so this is failing this is passing both of them are equal this is failing again and this is failing again if i run this code it doesn't show me any failure in case of soft assertion you have to write in the end that is soft assert dot assert all when you write soft assert dot assert all in the end then only the validation on every condition is done okay when you run this code you will see that it prints failures are one total test runs are one and failures are one i hope you are getting my point fine okay and if you look at the results it says that total following assertions failed 1 2 and 3 it will tell you all three of them okay so with that of soft assertions you can report multiple errors and you can prevent your program from stopping abruptly in between as well in case of non critical errors or something you can use soft assertions in case of critical errors you can use normal assertions okay so suppose i am in this again the first file search and by test out here you have got three test cases and you prioritize them and suppose in the first test case i write assert dot fail i, I fail this test case uh, because of uh, say any reason and if i run this code it reports a failure in the first particular function the other two are passing now this is the thing i don't want the other two tests to be executed because they are dependent on search right if you are not able to search the product how will you add it to the cart right so you have to make this test case dependent on this test case in case of a failure so you write over here comma depends on method write search this means that this test case is dependent on the search method or the search test case right so when you run this code you will see that the other one never comes up okay so you can keep this dependency in the third test case as well check out that check out depends on search as well as add to cart that if you have not added to the cart if both of them pass then only check out will execute okay so you can build the dependency between the test cases all right so 
says that two test cases are skipped and skipped one is a failure right so yellow shows both of them are skipped now at times you want to skip a test case deliberately instead of failing it you want to skip the test case you don't want it to be executed like if there are 100 test cases running out of 100 you just want to run 20 and you want to skip 80 of them so if you want to skip a test case you can write the line throw new skip exception and some message which will tell you the reason for skip you can throw a skip exception deliberately and you can skip the test case okay so when you run this code you will see that the search test skips and because it is skipping the other two test cases also skip because the search test is skipping it is not passing the other two tests were dependent on the search test okay so you have got loads of features in test engine then you have annotations like this is the test annotation right there are other annotations in test engine for example there is a annotation known as before test okay you can make a function like before and print hold on test out here you import this annotation and you have the annotation after test and you write public void after and print it after test so when you run this before hold on let me just comment this out as well i'll not skip the search test so when you run this you will see that before test is executed before executing all the three tests and after test is executed after executing all the three tests there is a predefined order in which these annotations are executed no matter where you keep them in the file it doesn't matter you keep them on the top or at the bottom or in the middle there is a predefined order in which these annotations they are executed okay so before test will be executed before executing the test cases and after test after that suppose you want to execute all the test cases on the same browser probably in the open in the before test you can open the browser execute all the test cases and then you can close it in selenium or suppose you want to manage a database connection you can open db connection and out here in after test you can close db connection right so we will see all these things we will be using these annotations similarly there are other annotations like for example at the rate before method okay public void before method right and you type inside it before method okay right now how is before method different than after method okay i will tell you right similarly you have at the rate after method 
public void. And you print after method. Right. Okay. So when you run this in the output. You will see that before method and after method are executed. Before and after executing every test case. Okay, before test and after test were just once. But, be but before method and after method are executed before and after executing every test. Okay, so we will be using this as well. For example, for every test, you have to generate a different report. So you can initialize report for every test in before method. And in after method, you can finalize the report. Or you can open a browser in before method, execute the test in after method, you can close the browser. So it's completely up to you. There is a predefined order of these annotations, no matter where you keep them in the file. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Now at times you want to run one test multiple times with different sets of data as well. Right. Suppose have got a test case like login test and you want to run it multiple times with different sets of data you want to supply data inside this test case and run it again and again with different sets of usernames and passwords okay. so in test ng we do it with the help of data provider. Okay, what we do is that we make a two dimensional array. Two dimensional array with multiple rows. Okay. And multiple columns. Alright, we build an array with multiple rows and multiple columns. The number of rows are equal to number of times you want to run test. Okay, right. For example, out here I have five rows. That means I want to run test five times. And in every row, you will give the data. Username, password, browser. Okay, say the browser I can keep Mozilla or something. And expected result. Okay, so you can keep your first set of data, then second set of data in second row, password, okay, browser, Chrome. expected result, something like this. So number of rows are equal to number of times you want to run the test and number of columns are equal to number of parameters in the test. Okay, out here you have got four parameters in the test case. I hope you are getting my point. I will keep this thing. On the phone. Right, so this is what we did. So you have a two dimensional array. The number of rows in this array are equal to number of times you want to run the test. And number of columns are equal to the parameters. You have got the first row out here 
will have the data the first set of data second row will have second set of data so we keep a two dimensional array okay right and what we do is that we make an annotation known as at the rate data provider so there are fixed steps out here which you need to remember when you have to run a test case with different sets of data the first thing is that you have to build a data provider annotation okay this data provider annotation will return you a two dimensional data array okay i'll make a two dimensional object array known as data say i'll put number of rows as 3 number of columns as 2 okay so first parameter out here is rows and the second is columns and i'll put up the values in the first row that is data so, so later on we will read the values from an excel file i am just hard coding the values right now as password so this is my first row of data i can put up every row hold on i can put up second row third row okay index will change so this is a two dimensional object array having the data okay the all the three rows and right over here a return data so the first step is that you have to finalize your two dimensional array and return it in the data provider the second step is that you have to tell this test case that the data is coming up from the get data function okay you have to tell it that the data provider for you is get data you are you are linking the test with this data provider and the third and the most important step is people make mistake over here times the number of input parameters in this function should be equal to number of columns there are two columns right username and password okay so you will have to write number of input parameters like this and that's it nothing else needs to be done when you run this code i have got nothing written in the test function but when you run this it will say total test runs are 3 it runs it with three different parameters in the results also first it is running with u1 p1 u2 p2 and u3 p3 it runs the test with three different parameters test ng automatically detects test ng detects that fine this is the data provider in the data provider i have got three rows so i have to run the test case three times so first it runs the test case with this row it passes u1 the first parameter into username the second parameter into password then it runs with the second row it passes u2 in username password p2 in password okay so that is why i told you the number of input parameters in this function should be equal to number of columns or the number of parameters in the test basically Okay, then only testng can pass it over. So testng detects that fine, this is the data provider. It, it goes in the data provider. It understands that fine, I have to run it three times and it runs it three times by passing over the data. Later on, what we are going to do is that we, we are going to use this data tomorrow. Probably I'll tell you that how to read it from the Excel file as well. 
okay right now at times you have to like i have got different java files over here four java files i can run them individually okay i can run these files individually but if i have to run them together okay if i have to run them together then what we do is that we use an xml file okay we use test ng.xml i will show you just one minute just a minute i have this test ng.xml file have had done yeah, i have this test ng.xml and i will just copy it and paste it under the project okay so this is an xml file in which you can keep all your test cases. you can specify your sweep name the name of your first test case i just call it as login test and it is inside the package test cases dot login test look this name you have to be careful with this name has to be the fully qualified name of your test case the package name followed by the name of the test okay the second test case is say search and by this name can be anything okay but the name over here you have to give the fully qualified correct name with the correct spelling because if you make the spelling wrong it will test and you will not it will go in error okay the third test case is say soft assertion test and it is in the class test cases dot soft assertions example and the last one i'll put the validation test cases dot validations so when you run this code or if you right click on testng.xml run as a testng sweep you will see that it's showing some exception cannot have the same name just one minute so this is there is some error my sample suite two tests in the same suite do not have the same name okay 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 i got it this should be the valid two test cases they cannot have the same name i gave the same name validation test name can be anything over here this name can be anything but it should not be same for different test cases so when you run this so it will say that total test runs are 8 and failures are 2 so you can run them in batch as well okay this is batch running i have executed all the test cases is seen a serial order they will be executed from top to bottom order in this file testng.xml as suggested by the file testng.xml they will be executed from top to bottom okay right so i will stop here tomorrow we will see the next session how to run test cases parallelly how to uh, generate extant reports how to read from excel into the test case so we will see different things today we just saw the overview of test ng that what actually it is fine